This is definitely a Martha Stewart style episode of What's on the Bench. Because one moment they're not done, the next moment they are. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 49. No, 40. No, it is. It's episode 49 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you're not familiar with this show, it's where I take you through projects I'm working on. Some completed, some not completed, some definitely not even close to being even started. Uh, this is one of those weeks where some things are done, some things are not done. Actually, I don't think anything's ever really done. Not in this hobby. Nothing's done. Anyway, first thing on the bench this week uh, is the Element Utron, now featuring two sets of door handles. Uh, <laughs> um, I've done a few things to this uh, to, in an effort to make it look better. I know some people are against the Ute style, FJ Cruiser style body, um, but I'm doing what I can with the cards that I've been dealt. And uh, I, I think I've made some improvements. Uh, first things first, clear front windshield. So now you can see through that. Hello. Uh, that actually took a lot of time and effort with my polycarbonate paint remover. Uh, I don't know what element did, but they put on some crazy ass paint. Uh, thick and very difficult to remove. I actually had to go in and get out some uh, high grit sandpaper and some polishing as uh, compounds to try to get it to be clear and I mean it's clear as clear can be not perfectly clear though not bad though uh, I also opted to cut out the side windows for optimal uh, viewing into the inside of the cabin and you'll see why in a moment uh, a full interior courtesy of night customs uh, this has been developed by James it does very much have that sort of let's see if we can get a good look at it in there Mm, there you go that's sort of that's not bad uh very fj cruiser inspired uh same kind of dash um and then um i opted to print the actual interior piece in this sort of uh red it's actually a burgundy color this was all printed on the bamboo labs x1 carbon quite possibly the best 3d printer for home use it's so fast so efficient excellent print quality at pretty much any layer uh, height and um its only real downside is it's loud very loud you can't run it in the same room and do other things uh, many other people will attest to that but it is an excellent printer it does an amazing job uh i printed all of these interior parts in about nine hours which is significantly less time than it would have taken on the old prusa um and it looks just as good uh, I also printed James's uh, rear view mirrors, as you can see. Uh, those turned out really nicely as well. I just haven't installed them yet. Um, he does have places to install them. I can't, you know, it's sort of like, I gotta find the spot and then stick them on. Because uh, there are holes in the interior panel specifically for this. And you know what, we might as well get the body off so you can get a better look at that. Um, Luckily, no glue is required. It all sits in because of where these are sitting, the door handles. I'll have to still remove those stickers. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, it's a perfect fit on the inside of the interior. Um, there's two body pins that hold those door handles in place. And once we remove those pins, we can remove the door handles. Lickety split. We'll Martha Stewart our way through that. Uh, but there you go that's the interior piece as you can see it's a very nice print and i'm really super impressed the uh, x1 consistently goes above and beyond my expectations and uh, i honestly it's the best printer i've ever used and i've had a few now uh, but i will put a link down below where you can pick one up for yourself if you are so interested they also offer a lower cost p1p version uh, which does not have the enclosure and i don't think it works with the ams which is the automatic uh, filament spool system uh, but just awesome printers uh, as you can see that, uh, that's straight off the printer no post-processing nothing that's just that's just the interior that's how they look uh, so fun little project there, definitely making this look better. I think there will be more stuff in the future on this platform. I really do want to do a hard body and I have an FJ Cruiser body and the 
you know, the public has spoken. You guys want to see a hard body on this? We're going to do that conversion uh, coming up in a couple weeks. So um, yeah, this was all in an effort to sort of show off the capabilities, show off James's new pieces, and um, also try to make this Utron look a little bit better. Did I hit the mark? Is it better? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback, and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can. And if you're enjoying this video and you like this series, What's on the Bench, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild, of which there always is many new videos okay let's get this off the bench and uh we'll pull that land rover over here in the oops i chuffed my gulliver category of this week's show the boom racing brx02 land rover series 3 and um this is nearly done last week i was live building the chassis showed off a few of the differences between this version and the original land rover uh, defender version I much prefer this. It just looks so rad. I'm not sure how many of you are actual Land Rover fans or aficionados, but they really knocked this one out of the park. Boom Racing did a great job on the BRX-02 in its original format. I think they even set the bar higher with this one. This body is so nice and so well detailed and so not finished yet. I am missing a few things. Uh, paint wise and of course the seats aren't in yet but man oh man they really nailed this there's also a, a lot of decals missing um, but the majority of the construction is done it's just so good it's so good and um, I could not be happier with it just chuffed <laughs> this has always been my favorite Land Rover I think uh, the series 3 was uh, for me a very iconic model. I scratch built, modified one of those old uh, bodies from who knows how long ago, man, um, ages. Uh, and um, this is just such a nice example. Uh, I chose a color here that's a Tamiya color. To find the can. Well, ah, I didn't have to dig for four minutes. Uh, this is gray green from Tamiya, AS29. It does come out in this sort of satin finish, which is very appropriate for these Land Rovers. Um, it was a nice match to the pastel green that uh, Land Rover actually offered on this truck. And um, it just it just really, like, this speaks to me. Uh, so, like I said, a few more things I need to complete, but for the most part, things are done. Uh, hood opens, sorry, bonnet. Uh, and it's magnetized so it stays nice and firmly in place. All the mesh is in there. Like, just look at the detail work on this. It's crazy good, and it's just awesome. Uh, a few things I still want to do. Obviously, the seats need to go in and get painted. Um, there's some trim along here that needs to be aluminum. Uh, same on the rear. Uh, all of this trim is aluminum and these parts here need to be painted aluminum. And I also want the wheels to be black. Uh, I did the, the one on the hood there, the spare already. I just thought it would look a lot better. I mean, it looks pretty good right now, I'm not gonna lie. But I think if these were black, it would just kind of be a little more unique and suit my personal taste a little bit more. Uh, I did see somebody doing a pretty interesting technique where they actually look like leather. So I'm gonna investigate that further and see if I can't uh, kind of replicate that. But for the most part, it's done. Uh, the chassis construction went super, super well. It is a very fine build. And uh, as it's set up right now, the leafs are pretty firm. Um, there is enough, there is some flex in there. So I mean, that still, you know, for Land Rover and Leafs, that's not bad. I might actually go in and uh, change that up they do offer a lot of different setup options for the leafs to give you more flex or less flex depending on how heavy your body is uh, i just love this model i love this chassis i think boom racing absolutely nailed it so could not be happier with how this looks a few more details and then it'll all be done okay uh, moving on finally today the axial scx 10 pro uh, here it is uh, and now with a uh, front um, body mount doodad. I sort of, I kind of fiddled around with my own design. I used some threaded rod 
some 3D printed parts and um, made up this uh, this mount. And it actually works pretty well. Uh, this is of course a actual Dodge Power Wagon. <laughs> Can't even say it with a straight face. Uh, this is an actual Dodge Power Wagon hood emblem. Um, I know it looks a lot like the Jaguar emblem, but you'd be wrong. Anyway, uh, this screws off. I printed that in PETG uh, carbon fiber, so it's uh, fairly strong. And you just unscrew that, and there's some nice threaded rod that sticks through the hole there, and off comes the body. I just quite literally screwed that into the bumper mount. Not altogether all that fancy, but very effective. Printed out some of my own uh, threaded nuts uh, using this 1024 uh, threaded rod. Uh, again, printed these in PETG for extra strength, and it does a great job of holding the body on, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Sometimes the simple solutions are the best ones, and uh, this is certainly that. Uh, but whatever works, right? You can buy a piece or you can just fabricate your own, and uh, that's exactly what I did. And it works perfectly. Couldn't be happier with that. Didn't cost all that much. Again, that was printed on the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon, and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's the SCX10 Pro all ready to go uh, with its new, more comp-friendly body. Um, but there are some developments there. I know that um, people don't want to see that Suga body go away. I am going to print another one for myself. Uh, but there is an opportunity possibly coming uh, where you could get your own uh, and not print it. That's all I'm going to say about it for now. Uh, but if there's any interest in that, you know what to do. Okay, uh, I think that's going to do it. A quick episode, uh, lots of stuff going on, lots of big projects starting to come into the workshop. Uh, there's going to be a Scorched Parts uh, felony build. So we're going to be building up a felony to go much faster than I've ever gone before. Uh, what else have we got? Well, there's going to be another Hilux build, uh, probably on a brazen mullet chassis. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, and then there's a multitude of Tamiya kits that I should probably build. So uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming. Oh, including uh, Promoto MX from Lozy. So hope you'll stick around for that because that's going to be some fun content for sure. Uh, that's going to do it though. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you again next week.